So today I want to talk about Bahrain part two. Um, how long I stayed in Bahrain and uh, why did I come back home that soon? Hi guys, hello and um, welcome back. Um, I'm Esther Nyaribari. Thanks for coming back to watch my videos. Thanks for commenting and thanks for subscribing. So today I want to talk about Bahrain part two. Um, how long I stayed in Bahrain and uh, why did I come back home that soon? Watch until the end. So it was on the 17th of December 2017 is when I started my journey from Kenya. And uh, I connected three flights to Bahrain. Uh, the first flight was from JKIA to Ethiopia. The second flight was from Ethiopia to Damam, Saudi. And the third flight was from Saudi to Bahrain. Now, the worst happened when I was landing in Bahrain uh, and I realized my bag was missing. So I tried checking around and um, by the help of the security guards, I didn't find my bag and I was told to go and come back after 12 days. Maybe they could have traced it somewhere. But when I came back, my bag was not there. And uh, um, the people uh, in the Ethiopian airline offices, they never responded because I used to write emails. I used to call the Ethiopian office in a, the Ethiopian airline office in, in Bahrain, but they never responded. So I just lost my bag like that. And um, when I got to Bahrain, I was taken to a family of four. A family of five, actually, uh, three kids and and and, and parents. They had a grandmom, but somebody, an Ethiopian girl, was taking care of that. So I was dealing with the five people. My stay there wasn't so bad. It wasn't so good at the same time because, you know, uh, when you get to some new place, their food is kind of different. Uh, you know, I've never had seafood and that is what they eat mostly. So, in fact, I only survived on, on tea and bread and, uh, and rice, maybe fish at some point. So, I stayed in Bahrain for nine months and then uh, I came back. I never wanted to come back because, um, you know, I had signed a two years contract. So I could stay in that place for two years. But then uh, um, it happened like on, on my way. That's after nine months stay in Bahrain. My son broke his uh, arm. You know, I I had left him with my parents. So um, when they realized my son had broken his, his arm, they decided not to tell me. So everybody kept quiet and I could call home. They could tell me he's okay. So one time, somebody sent me a text and told me, you know, your son broke, broke his arm, blah, blah, blah. So I was worried and I tried calling everybody in the family. It happened like everybody was offline. So I, I was worried and uh, I didn't know where to start. So after some time when my dad was online, I tried calling him on video. You know, I, I had... I had been calling them on video. At least I get to talk to them. I see my son. So I called him on video, but he hung up. And then when I called audio, he picked and uh, how I, I asked them how they were doing. And uh, I wanted to talk to Beckham, but he told me Beckham is playing outside. The following morning, I called very early in the morning. And he told me Beckham is dressing up to school, up for school. And um, after some time, I called. He told me he was off to school. And then, uh, okay, I waited. You know, I had that in mind, like, my son is not okay. But my parents never wanted to tell me because they knew if I, I got to know that, I could fly home immediately. So, um, and then I waited until uh, 4 p.m. In, in the afternoon. So in the evening, I called him again. And I asked, where is Beckham? And he told me he's playing outside so i told them when he comes back uh, let, let him talk to me uh, they didn't call back and when i called it was around 8 8 30 somewhere p.m 
I called my dad again and I was like, can I talk to Beckham? He told me, no, Beckham is asleep. So you can imagine I've been calling him since yesterday and um, they haven't given me my son to talk to him. And I'm sure something happened to him, but they, they don't want to tell me. And, you know, I was worried. So now that I felt like it may be something worse than, than only breaking the arm. And then that is how I booked a flight at night. And then the following day, I was calling my dad from JKI. It was around um, 6, 7 p.m. I was like, hi, dad, I'm at JKI. And he was like, JKI, Kenya? When did you fly back? Blah, blah. So it happened like I just came home to to know what happened to my son now that they never wanted to tell me and I had an idea something has happened. Uh, so that's how I came back very soon. So I stayed in Bahrain for nine months um, and I, I could see some people getting mistreated even in the families that I was uh, I was with. But for my sake, as in personally, I can't tell I was mistreated. I don't know um, if there was something I could call a mistreatment Maybe a lot of work you hear and there, you sleep for less hours and uh, you called all the time. But um, I was working there and at the same time, I was working for the extended family. Like um, this madame had uh, three sisters and, uh, and four, four brothers. So the whole family, I was working as a teacher, um, as an English teacher for the, for the kids, like for 15 or 16 kids. So um, over the weekends we could meet in their grandmother's in their grandmother's house and everybody was lining there with his and her English homework. So I was I was working as well as a teacher but with with no pay. Um and I guess that was the reason maybe I was never mistreated. 